right, everybody, welcome back to the pre-foreclosure training here at the Propelio Academy, uh, brought to you by Propelio.com, your resource for websites, lead lists, uh, running your due diligence analysis. So if you haven't checked out Propelio.com yet as the software, make sure to go check that out. But now that we are back here, we have learned a little bit about the pre-foreclosure process, looking through some of the documents. But as you're going through these foreclosure documents, you're going to want to confirm who is foreclosing on the property? Is it a first lien position, second lien position, third lien position? And that's what we're gonna talk about today in this episode of Lien Positions. What I need to go ahead and say moving forward here is as with everything we've talked about up until now, every single one of your states are gonna be different. There's gonna be complete I say complete, but there's going to be marginally different laws, some of them completely different laws. And based upon some of the things I'm telling you, what I'm trying to do is get you to a point where you're educated enough to know what you're looking for. I'm going to drop links in the in the uh, section below, so make sure you go look down there and look for your resources, uh, giving you some links to the homestead laws in the 50 states if I can find them for you. But you're going to need to go out after this show and read up on your state's laws. So that's like lesson homework number one. But what I want you to figure out is how funds are dispersed at the auction. If a property goes to auction and it's sold, who gets paid and when and why? And that will also help you understand lien positions through this. So liens are worked as the first one that's filed is the first person that gets paid at the auction. And I've kind of put together an animation here to try and help convey that. So if I come over here and look at this, right here, May of 2018, I got a first position mortgage for $100,000. That was filed May of 2018. Let's say after I purchased the property, I want to go out and get a um, home modification loan or something, not a home modification loan, but a uh, home equity loan. So I can go out and do a little bit of remodel and stuff on my property. So just a few months or about a year later, in June of 2019, I get a second mortgage and that second mortgage is for $80,000. So against this property now, in county records, the first one that's filed, that's gonna be filed in public records, gonna get date stamped. It's gonna be date and time of May in 2018. And since it is the first and only filing in public record, it is the first position lien. The second lien that has came in in June of 2019 is time-stepped in the county records as well, and it's a second position lien. If this lien was recorded on a date before this one, it would be the first position lien. I wanna make sure, I'm, I know I'm moving a little slow with this, but I don't wanna confuse you. And uh, I tend to speak fast, so on this one, I'm intentionally trying to slow down. All right, what happens if I go out after I've done these home repairs in June of 2019 with the equity loan that I received, I failed to pay one of my contractors that contractor will have the right to file a contractor's lien or a mechanic's lien against my property. And since it was filed in July of 2020, what that now means is it is a third position lien because it was recorded in public record after these first two, giving it the third position lien. Simple process so far. So what I wanna make sure that you're following is this right here. First position lien, 100,000. Second position lien, 80,000 third position lien, 20,000. What happens when this property is gonna to go to auction? Who's gonna get paid and when? So if this property goes to auction, and let's say it's the first position lien that decides to file. We've got the first position lien right here, and they haven't been paid. And since they have not been paid, they have chose to move forward with their foreclosure process, and they are owed $100,000. They get to the auction and they sell it. They get there, somebody's willing to buy it, and they end up paying $120,000 for that property at auction. Who gets paid, why, and how? So since $120,000 was made at the auction, 100,000 of that goes to the first position lien of 100 grand, but there's $20,000 in excess right here that does not get to be claimed by the first position lien. That excess of funds is then going to move forward and get paid to the second position lien. So there's only 20,000 left over, but that 20,000 would go to the second position lien, although it did not completely make the second position lien whole in what was owed to them, they did still get some. 
But how much money did this third position lean down here get? It got nothing. It got absolutely nothing. And that is because whenever we have lean positions filed, the first one that's filed gets paid first. Second gets paid second, so on and so forth. Now in some other slides and in some other instructional classes here in the Propelio Academy, I did discuss that yes, before this first position lien gets filed, you're gonna have the, the uh, attorney, the foreclosure attorney is gonna get paid first. The county, the taxing authorities, they're gonna get paid second, but those are kinda like, I don't wanna call them super liens because that's a different term, but they take precedence over everything else. The attorney gets paid first, the county gets paid second, I'm pretty sure that's correct. It might be the county gets paid first then the attorney, but it's irrelative right now because neither one of them truly matters in this class. But you're going to have your attorneys and your cities getting paid first, then your first position, second position, and third position. So if you heard me say this before, that is the absolute truth. You do have, attor you do have attorneys and the county over here, but I'm trying to just get into the lean position side of it. So I may have just confused you a little bit if I did ask your questions in the comments below. But First position, second position, third. First position foreclosed, they were owed 100 grand, sold for 120, 100,000 goes to first position lien, 20,000 goes to second position lien, and third position gets absolutely nothing. What happens if that property went to auction and it sold for 80,000? Well then, the first position lien would receive 80,000, second position lien would receive nothing, and third position lien would also receive nothing, giving them the right to file deficiency judgments in the future for the money still owed to them. All right, so one of the liens that we're gonna see quite often and almost always is gonna be mortgages. Mortgages is the money that a lender has given to the borrower for the purchase of the house, and they have agreed to receive that money back over time. More so the case is these are going to be the people that are actually foreclosing on the house. Like probably 90 plus percent of the properties that go to foreclosure are going to be foreclosed on by a mortgage. It's not often a, you know, an abstract of judgment or a mechanics lien or something like that foreclosing on them. You do have HOAs and other stuff. But overall, your, your overwhelming majority of foreclosures are going to come through mortgages. Depending upon what type of entrance exit strategy that you're looking at on your real estate business, um, the different types of lenders might be of specific importance to you, such as, you know, I'm looking for specific banks that were in business pre-crash that gave out a bunch of bad loans and I'm looking for those specific lenders to maybe target some different acquisition strategies I'm going after. Or maybe I might want to um, see if I can find second position liens that have a really large amount that are eating up the equity. So that way I might be able to go after the first position lien and get that second one wiped on a short. I might be getting a little more advanced with you there, but you know, different ways of targeting just based upon the mortgage lien data. So mortgages are one type of lien that you will see and almost always see. All right, so abstracts of judgment. That's gonna be another lien type. I don't know what it's called across the United States, but overall what it is, is someone was, has received a judgment through the courts for money owed to them, and they file it in public record against the owner of this property. Uh, some examples might be the owner took out a credit card, the, never paid the credit card back, credit card went to the courts, well, she received a judgment for the money owed to them, and then they file it in public record so that way if they ever try and sell anything or do anything, it, the public has been made aware that this judgment is owed. Um, there are some benefits to having these types of judgments held against the property, depending upon what your homestead laws are in your specific states. I know for a fact here in Texas that if it is your homestead property, you cannot attach abstracts of judgments to that. Uh, some of those might even actually be child support liens and stuff like that. So if there are large child support liens, large credit cards charged to it, medical bills, any of those odd uh, ball loans against this, not loans, but liens against this property, um, quite often, at least in Texas, you can get them removed without having them paid off. So let's say you have several investors go out and do a title run on the property and find out that there's more money owed against the property than what it's worth, and they walk away from it. If you have the knowledge up front that, hey, just because there's more money owed against it, than what it's worth doesn't necessarily mean that we can't start getting some of those judgments removed from the property by the uh, local state laws, uh, get all that removed and then create equity where there was none previously. So using these types of liens, knowing the lien types gives you the ability to start searching for and acquiring property. So you might actually be able to go out in a public record and look specifically for abstracts of judgment, possibly to either purchase them and or purchase the property and remove them from the real estate. Uh, so let's go on to the next one here. What do we have? 
So up next is mechanics liens. Pretty simple. Somebody does some work on the property, does some capital improvements, does something to the property to upgrade it in any sort of fashion, do not get paid. They, they can then go out and file in public record a mechanics lien against the property for the money that was owed to them for the work. Similar to abstracts of judgment, there may be specific laws in your state that reflect how these can be attached to property. So if you understand those laws or you're working with a team of people that understand these laws, a good title company is important. They might be able to quickly analyze a mechanics lien, look at it and say this is valid or not valid and have it removed from the title. So if there's a $30,000 mechanics lien against a property and you need $30,000 to make this deal work, that right there might be the opportunity to open up and go move forward with your new property. All right, super liens. Super liens are pretty much non-negotiable. You're, you're highly unlikely gonna be able to get out of some of these. Now, I'm not saying that is an all across the board rule, but they are a lot stiffer to deal with. Some of them being, um, super liens being like HOAs. If an HOA is owed money, even if it is like in no position, the HOAs are set up in such a way that if there's a first position lien, the HOA can jump in in front of it and foreclose and knock everybody else out. That may change from state to state. I keep repeating that because I try to make sure that uh, I try not to give bad information. I'm giving information based upon the information I know. So you might live in Alaska or something like that and this not work for you. But overall, HOAs can jump in front of everybody, foreclose and wipe the record. So with HOAs, um, they rarely ever negotiate a short payoff. They're gonna want all of their money paid in full, but you can short an HOA from time to time. Uh, as a strategy, you might be able to work with people to cure their HOA loans and or purchase that debt. And so that way you can foreclose and wipe everybody else out. That's a little more of an advanced strategy there. Uh, let's take a look at other super liens. Let's take a look at and government liens, such as IRS tax, local state tax, if you do not pay your taxes, guess what? You don't own that house anymore. They will take it. You can short them. It's rare. It's not simple. Like with the IRS, more often, you, most, most often what you're going to end up having to do is request third-party appraisals, third-party BPOs, inspections, and get that lender, or not that lender, but the IRS very much aware of the value of that property before they accept any sort of short payoff on that. Uh, you're also going to have... Um, like mowing liens, water liens, sewer liens. Um, what other government liens might you run into? Uh, maybe mowing liens, somebody doesn't take their property and the city has to do capital improvements. Those are some other liens you might be able to see in there. So these are all things that you might also be able to inquire in public record on for other motivating sources for leads. Like if somebody's got the city, you know, boarding up their house for them, that might be an indication that they can't afford to do it themselves. Or if they're having somebody else being, somebody else mowing their house for them, might be abandoned or vacant. Just all different indicators of possible, um, possible resources for you to find other leads through these, through this knowledge here. Okay, so we've discussed four lien types now. Those will cover the majority of the liens you'll run into. You might see some variances from the here to there, but your title company should be able to work you through those. But I just wanted to give you some examples of different lien types that you will often encounter when you're dealing with these types of properties. Let's take a look at the next step, homestead laws. I've discussed that a few times throughout this class so far, but homestead laws are going to affect a creditor's rights to place liens against your property. And the better you understand your state and local laws, the better you will be at understanding which liens are valid and which ones are not. So just because you see a lien on public record doesn't necessarily mean that it has the right to be there. And um, researching your homestead laws is going to give you a leg up on many investors because they're not gonna take the time to learn this. I'm gonna try and include the links to your homestead laws in the, in the resources below. So scan through, find yours. If you have questions, reach out in the forums, get out there, engage with everybody else in the community, and uh, just work together to become better investors. So all of this put together, how is this affecting me? By knowing the lien positions, the payoffs, the payouts, the homestead laws, how does that affect me as an investor? Um, depending upon what my entrance and exit strategies might be, I might, like I said earlier, specifically target different liens, different lien filings, different lien dates, because different things within my own repertoire of investing knowledge 
says that those specific targets are doing better for me. Uh, very quick examples are, if I'm out wanting to do a whole bunch of short sales, I might target specifically properties with multiple liens, because if I can get a first position with equity, then I know, and I know that they're going, they're, they're defaulting, I can target that one specifically because I know if I go into a short scenario, I can typically wipe all junior liens from, from title with nothing more than a simple offer of, I know you're, off, you're, you're owed $50,000, Mr. Second Lien, but my offer to you today is 500 bucks. And either you take $500 from me today or I will take this property to foreclosure. And when it does go to foreclosure, you're going to lose all of your second lien position because it's not gonna sell for more than what the first position is owed. If you didn't understand that, don't worry, you don't need to. Watch the short sales training section here brought to you by Melody over at Oye's Real Estate. She teaches you what, what short sales are, but I'll, sh I'll go ahead and go through on the advanced strategies in this class, in this pre-foreclosure class, and get into some more of those in-depth strategies like what I was just talking about. Although that wasn't necessarily in-depth, but if I'm targeting pre-foreclosures, pre-foreclosures marry extremely well with shorts and sub two. Those three right there all kind of motivate and work together because as I'm marketing for pre-foreclosures, I will find a ton of sub twos and shorts. So things that marry well together that you might want to put together in your head. So that's an example of why I might want to know what's going on here. And your homework for today is going to be go out there and find out what your homestead laws are, study them, and go out to your public record and start searching and try and figure out what, what that looks like on your side. So have a great day. I appreciate you for checking us out. Propelio.com is your number one resource for all of your investing needs, such as websites, lead lists, uh, marketing tools, and everything else in between. I can't even even think of all of it that we do. So if you haven't checked us out yet, go out and check out Propelio.com to help your real estate investing business grow. Have a good day.